Hi everybody, it's Hugo Go Go. We're gonna talk about and Hugo Go Go. Hugo Go. We're gonna talk about my costumes. Um, this has been like a thing that people have wanted me to talk about. I have collected and made a lot of interesting shit over the years, and we're gonna talk about some looks. Tiny hat. Everyone loves a tiny hat. Okay, so this is probably like my most iconic Hugo look, like I wore it in the House of Drag, promos, uh, actually one of my first looks I ever did at Hugo was like a really basic version of the ringleader. This is literally a menagerie look, so the menagerie is a cabaret show in Wellington which has been running for many years, uh, run by Rachel Rouge. Rachel Rouge is like my drag mom, so she gave me my first ever stage spot, she gave me my first ever emceeing spot, which is crazy because I do that twice a week now. So uh, this is, this look was created specifically to match the menagerie branding. I've worn it on stage at the Opera House and the uh, Isaac Theatre Royal in Christchurch and it's just me. I just feel bomb in it. So this is my most uncomfortable item. So these are beautiful, like handmade angel wings made by Janet Van in Auckland. Acquired them to do like a really elaborate Christmas angel look for the Christmas show, which is one of my favorite shows to do, the Big A Christmas drag show. And I wear it with my white suit, I wore it on House of Drag. This goes into a corset, so which is why it's so uncomfortable. So it's like, like all the pressure of this whole wings is like around your rib cage and trying to move and talk while doing that in and heels. It's not good, but Holy fuck, they look great, don't they? So they're weirdly realistic. They're like, they move. So when you walk, it's like. This bad boy is my comfiest outfit. It's real sneaky because it's basically a fucking tracksuit. It's real comfy on the inside and silky, but it's sequined so it looks fancy. If I have to go to a gig where I need to be there for a long time, I wear my platform sneakers, which are functionally flats, and this, and chill the fuck out. This is my newest outfit. Um, it's going to be the base of my Halloween outfit. I bought it off the internet in its entirety, which is a bit of a rarity for me, a bit of a treat. So this is actually gonna be, I know it's spacey, but this is actually gonna go into a clown look. So like adding a huge um, black and silver ruff around the neck and wrists and a matching hat. And it's going to be the reveal layer underneath a jack-in-the-box look. And this is dun, da, 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 my first costume piece. So uh, this is for a little vintage schoolboy look. That was the first Hugo look ever. I wore it with the uh, Bota hat hanging up on my wall. And in this I did an act to Postmodern Jukebox's Stacy's mom is a little vintage schoolboy. And uh, my tape popped and I had my tits out my first act ever. What a debut. Anyway, this was like 40 bucks from a vintage store which felt just absolutely extravagant at the time. And I never wear it anymore but I keep it because it's precious. So this is my like most proud of outfit. It's very recent but I made it. It's a giant fucking sequin jumpsuit and I bought it as like a huge batwing jumpsuit off boohoo and basically had to like deconstruct it and put it all back together and then with the offcuts I made this giant turban which sits on top of a big pomp and I'm basically becoming more and more of a drag queen every day instead of a drag king. I feel lavish in it, you know you walk into a room in this and it's just like thank you so much I made it, it tailored, it's tailored to my body perfectly and I just feel like a fucking diva. Don't I look pretty? This is uh, what I am like, I haven't worn it yet, so it's the thing that I'm most looking forward to wearing or whatever. It's fucking ridiculous. I got this off Siobhan Borealis in Auckland, who bought it off Yuri Guy, uh, both fantastic drag queens. And then I was clearing out, so we basically just did like a trade of clothing and costumes and I got this out of it and it's obscene and I'm getting to wear it at like a pink themed show. Drag's not about gender a lot of the time for me like just doing dumb shit that makes people laugh is 
is often what I'm trying to do with costumes, encouraging people to laugh at me with my permission. I'm really looking forward to doing that in this. Okay, so this is like a bit of a complicated outfit because I love it. It's one of my, this is what I did my first MCN gig. It's, it's comfy, it's cute, but other people love it heaps and I don't really particularly get it. They're just like, oh, it's so iconic and it's because it's a Boy Scout. I do it with a, a, the fluffy hat over here and the yellow necktie and it's cute, but people kind of lose their minds about it and I don't really get it because it's not sparkly, it's not bright. So it defies all my inbuilt logic about what a good costume is. This one kind of breaks the rules. It's also got a lot of rude patches on it. Yeah, Auntie Helen, fuck yeah. Um, so if you have uh, recommendations of good patches I can use to sparkle and spruce up this, send them to me and also, um, yeah, maybe remember that good costumes don't need to be lavish. So, this is a tag that's kind of weird to talk about, but this is my most expensive item. Uh, it is a noose and monkey pink tuxedo, which has been tailored to fit me, and also rhinestoned. And it's what I wear when I do corporate gigs and I need to look like I know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, it's mask, it's camp, it's fucking beautiful. Um, I will own it and wear it forever. And also, it wasn't that expensive. My rate of what is lavishly expensive is pretty fucking low, um, but also pretty, ooh. And this is my first ever suit. It's a three-piece suit from Jack London in Melbourne. The shirt and tie is from, I think it's called Tangent, that vintage men's store on Huber Street. Uh, when I tried this on in the store, I uh, cried. I had a really shit time. I had a horrible time shopping for this um, because it was the first time I wore like a modern men's suit and it felt real uncomfortable and uh, I was not doing a good job of processing my emotions about looking like a man. I look like a secondhand car salesman in it and that's perfect. That's fucking ideal. This is one of my favorite things to wear. I look like the sugar plum princess diva I was destined to be. It's a custom look by Frox by Frank and it's like my House of Drag winning look. I commissioned it after I won. The process of winning was very stressful and blurry and exhausting and not good, but the process of having it air and people know that I won was very nice and I got to wear this on the night. And it has leg floofy things and it's so floofy and there's a crown that goes with it and it's just, it's good vibes. This, this outfit is good vibes. And I have my butt out, so. I'm kind of obsessed with the concept of joy. When I started out in drag, I was really pushing hard for like the, I wanna look like a hairy teenage boy, like really, like it was quite straight up and down drag king, looking like a man. And as I uh, become more okay with myself maybe, but oh, there's a feather. Uh, but, and also more, uh, Reckless, I'm getting glitterier and glitterier and less giving a shit about the feminine aspect. So like previously I'd be like quite paranoid about um, my masculine lines and suits and stuff like that. And um, now I'm just kind of doing drag. Like I'm not really, there's lots of different ways to look like a man and I'm just doing a lot of those different ways of things and also just trying to spread joy through the power of sequence. So that's kind of my costuming philosophy. Let me know if you want to know more stuff about my room or life or job or performance and uh, I will oblige because I am a deeply insecure people pleaser. Have a great day wherever you are.